Hey there, YouTube fam. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're about to explore the incredible journey of the pianist on the big screen. But before we start, make sure to smash that like button, subscribe to our channel, and turn on the notification bell so you won't miss any of our amazing movie summaries. All right, let's dive right into the captivating world of The Pianist. The Pianist is a really intense movie that takes place during World War II in Warsaw, Poland. It starts with a talented pianist named Ladislaw Spilman playing beautiful music on the radio. But suddenly, bombs start falling near the building, causing a lot of chaos and destruction. Even though it's really dangerous, Spielmann insists on continuing to play. As the bombing gets worse, Spielmann decides to go downstairs and find his family in the lobby of the radio station. When he gets there, everyone in his family is really scared, and they're trying to pack their things and figure out how to leave Warsaw. But then, Spielmann meets a young woman named Dorota who loves his music. They talk for a little bit, but Dorota's brother takes her away. While the family is still getting ready to leave, they hear some news that gives them a little hope. Great Britain has declared war on Nazi Germany, which means that maybe things will start to get better. But their hope doesn't last long because German soldiers come into Warsaw and take over the city. Now the family has to figure out how to hide their valuable things from the Germans. They come up with different hiding spots like the window frame, the cupboard, and even inside a violin. The family is really scared, and the tension between them keeps growing. In another scene, Spillman calls his friend Jurek, and they talk about how bad things are in Warsaw. Later, he goes for a walk with Dorota, and they have a little bit of happiness in the midst of all the chaos. Meanwhile, the family has to deal with new laws that make Jews wear armbands with the Star of David on them. The scene ends with the family gathered around the table, listening to their father read from the newspaper about a new district for Jews and the restrictions that are being placed on them. They're really scared and don't know what will happen to them in the future because they're facing more and more oppression and discrimination. It's autumn, and the family is part of a big group of Jews who are being taken to an area that will become a ghetto. As they walk, they see Polish people watching them from the sides of the street. Spielmann sees Dorota among the onlookers and talks to her briefly before rejoining his family. It's a really emotional and intense moment in the movie. The Spielmann family has moved into their new apartment in the ghetto. They're unpacking their things and talking about how the living arrangements aren't as bad as they thought. They notice a wall being built across the street, which shows that things are getting even tougher. Then the scene changes to winter in the ghetto market area. Spielmann and Henrik are trying to sell books, but they're talking about how difficult life is in the ghetto. They mention how some people are smuggling goods while others are suffering. They meet a woman called the Feather Woman who is searching for her husband. Next, Spielmann and Henrik are in a big crowd of Jews waiting to cross the street. They talk to a nervous man who is frustrated with the situation. Suddenly, a street band starts playing and the German soldiers pick couples from the crowd to dance in the street. Spielmann and Henrik feel disheartened by the situation. The movie then jumps to a later time. Spielmann is playing the piano at a cafe called Novochesna. The atmosphere is sad, and Halina, a friend, rushes in and tells Spielmann that Henrik has been taken by the authorities. Spielmann runs through the streets, and he sees the feather woman again, but he doesn't have any information about her husband. He arrives at a labor bureau building where a crowd of men is being herded by Jewish policemen and German soldiers. Spielmann sees Heller, a man with influence, and tries to ask for help in finding Henrik. But Heller refuses to help without payment and leaves Spielmann feeling helpless and alone. Spielmann is hiding in an alleyway, keeping an eye on the labor bureau building. He sees German soldiers and a smaller crowd in the area. He witnesses a poor woman being attacked by an old man who tries to steal her can of soup. The can falls, and the soup spills on the ground. The old man desperately licks the soup off the pavement, while the woman cries in despair. Suddenly, a ragged man named Rubenstein approaches the Germans outside the bureau and taunts them with a stick. They initially laugh, but eventually give him a cigarette and he continues on his way. Spielmann watches this with a small smile before refocusing on the building. Spielmann continues to watch the bureau's entrance. Heller, a Jewish policeman, appears at the entrance and calls for Henrik, who stumbles and falls. Spielmann rushes to help Henrik, and they have a tense conversation about Spielmann's attempt to save Henrik from being taken away. They walk together, arguing, and eventually reach a wooden bridge that connects the small ghetto to the large ghetto. 
Henrik stumbles and reveals that he is hungry. Spielmann supports him and takes him to a cafe called Novochesna. Inside the cafe's kitchen, Henrik finishes a bowl of soup and sits with Schipielmann and another man named Benick. They discuss the requirement of an employment certificate to work for German firms in the ghetto and the rumors of resettlement and labor camps in the East. Henrik expresses his frustration and insists on looking after himself, while Spielmann argues that they need to help each other. The Spielmann family is crossing the Klodna Street Bridge between the small and large ghettos. They carry their belongings, and a German film crew is recording the scene. They unload a truck filled with items in a yard and sort through them in a warehouse. Inside the warehouse, they bring their things and settle in a room divided by makeshift partitions. They discuss the employment certificates, the closure of the small ghetto, and the rumors of resettlement and labor camps. The next day, they join a large group of people being herded towards a train on the street leading to Umschlagplatz. The atmosphere is tense and chaotic. They see a distressing scene near a wall with dead bodies which deeply affects them. They continue walking and sit on the pavement, waiting. As time passes, things become more desperate. People are crying, children are begging for water, and there's a feeling of despair. Dr. Ehrlich and Grun argue about the fate of the Jews while the Spielmanns sit together, silently sharing a caramel candy. The train arrives and the Spielmanns are separated. Henrik and Helena get on one truck, while the others are pushed along to the next. Spielmann is momentarily saved by Heller, who pulls him out of the crowd. But as he watches his family board the train, he panics and runs away. Spielmann finds himself alone in an empty street, feeling devastated and lost. He walks through the desolate ghetto, seeing scenes of destruction and death. He arrives at Jehuda Ziskan's courtyard and finds their lifeless bodies. He goes inside their chaotic room and creates a makeshift bed on the floor, feeling empty and numb. Spielmann arrives at Café No Wuchina, which is in disarray. He hears a hiss and finds Benek hiding under the platform. They hide together as German soldiers and SS officers patrol the area. Spielmann shares his desire to escape and his uncertainty about the fate of the Jews with Benek. Later, Supilman and other Jewish workers march out of the ghetto gates, singing a defiant song to show their resilience. During the march, he sees Majorek, who informs him that their mutual friends have moved. Back at the building site, Shipilman faces a brutal encounter with Zigzag, who beats him mercilessly. But Shipilman manages to hide a pistol and ammunition, preparing himself for the dangerous situation. With the help of Janina Godlewska and Andrzej Bogucki, Spielmann finds temporary refuge in their apartment. He changes his clothes and burns his torn ghetto attire. They arrange for him to stay at Gubczynski's store for a while. In a secret compartment in Gubczynski's store, Spielmann discovers stacked weapons, revealing the intensity of the resistance movement. The scene transitions to Spielmann boarding a tram with Gubczynski. They go to an apartment on the other side of the ghetto wall. In the new apartment, Spielmann reflects on his uncertain existence and looks out at the ghetto. Gebczynski provides him with food and instructions for emergencies. Spielmann lies down on a comfortable divan, finding a brief moment of relief from the harsh realities of his situation. Spielmann wakes up in his apartment and overhears a heated argument between two people in the neighboring flat. He enjoys the entertainment of the argument and then hears someone playing the piano with passion but making many mistakes. Suddenly, there are sounds of rifle shots and an explosion from outside. Spielmann rushes to the window and sees the devastation in the ghetto. German soldiers and officers are attacking, setting buildings on fire. Jewish fighters try to defend themselves but are eventually overpowered. Later, Janina visits Spielmann and brings him food. They discuss the events in the ghetto and hope for resistance from the Poles. They watch as buildings burn, feeling saddened by the destruction. Time passes and Spielmann's health deteriorates. He remains in hiding, but is eventually discovered by Kitty. He manages to escape and seeks refuge in Dorota's villa, where he receives help. Spielmann becomes seriously ill, and a doctor diagnoses him with gallbladder inflammation and an enlarged liver. Despite his illness, he hears news of the uprising in the city and the advances of the Allies. As the situation worsens, Spielmann witnesses intense fighting, bombings, and the ruthless actions of the Germans. He is trapped in his apartment, watching the destruction unfold. The scene ends with a tank targeting his building and an explosion that fills his apartment with smoke and broken glass. In the next part of the movie, war turns Warsaw into a dangerous battlefield for Spielmann. 
His apartment fills with smoke from bombings, and he desperately tries to escape. He discovers a hole in the wall and enters the neighboring apartment. He reaches the attic, narrowly avoiding German soldiers on the roof. Spillman finds shelter in a ruined hospital where he sees soldiers burning corpses. Continuing his journey, he seeks refuge in a ravaged villa where he encounters a compassionate German captain. They bond over music and have conversations about the war. As the Germans evacuate, Spielmann ventures out but is mistaken for a German by Polish soldiers. They realize their mistake and take him to headquarters. In a holding camp, Spielmann meets Lednicki, who asks for his help in finding the German captain. The scene then moves to a mesmerizing scene in a concert hall where Spielmann plays the piano. Captions reveal the fate of the captain and Spielmann's continued life in Warsaw until his death. Thanks for watching this amazing movie with us. If you liked this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and turn on notifications so you won't miss any of our future movie summaries.